In this lesson, we'll work on adding additional color and value into the skirt in order to give it more form. Okay, great. So in the last lesson, we used uh, that pink and that initial color of red to kind of fill in the skirt and uh, cross over the areas of the green stripes to make them darker in certain areas. I went ahead and did the other half in between lessons. Hopefully yours looks very similar to mine. Um, and at this point, we're ready to go ahead and start giving uh, a little more form to the skirt. Now, the problem with it currently is, is um, in the areas that would be more shadowed or shaded because of the... Uh, the curvature of her hips or the position of the light source, those areas are the exact same color of red as other areas that are more illuminated. Uh, so I've got a couple other colors of red here we can experiment with. So um, let's come over here and take a look at this block here that I've colored in this red color. And I'm going to use my same marker here, and we're just going to simply color over that with uh, the first of those reds. And you can kind of see how that color changes. Now, this next red is really more of a purple, uh, but you can see here what that looks like. If I would come over that, um, you can see kind of how that blends with that current red. So we've got a couple of different values to uh, work with here. We could even go a little darker if we really wanted to, maybe something like this here. That's, that's awful dark, though. So I don't think we need to get our shadows that dark. Let's go ahead and go with this one first here. And I'm just simply going to come in on this exact same layer. And let's just come in and start to add some value. So thinking about our light source here, let me just rotate the canvas a little. There we go. That light source, again, is above and to the, uh, the front of our model or our character. You can see here that uh, the light source is already casting highlights, and it's already creating shadows, too. So um, let's obey that same light source and come in here and start to just bring in some additional shadows. To come in here just like so. Now the first place we probably should focus on is these little crevices right here. Uh, these little folds in between the, the pleats. So I'm going to come in and darken those up first. Now again, the same rules apply as in the previous lesson. We want to steer clear of these light green squares that we work so hard to create. So. Uh, Make sure you don't go accidentally go over one of those. Now, if you need to, you can always come over here and grab something like that to really darken those up. You might see a little bit of difference. Really, those are very similar values. One of them is just a little more saturated than the other. And let me come in here with this uh, this one that has a little more saturation. And I'm going to bring these pleats up even a little bit further than the lines. All right, great. So I'm going to make this brush a bit larger here. And again, like I said, I'm just going to start going over it and giving it a little more value. Thinking about kind of this shirt above is probably going to cast a bit of a shadow onto um, kind of this, this little roll around her, um, her belt or whatever she's wearing there. So we're going to come in and kind of darken that. We're also going to darken it up over on this side quite a bit, just simply because of that's the side that's really furthest away from the light source. So uh, let me come in here, shrink my brush down a little bit. Again, being really careful with those little green squares. Trying to kind of weave my way in and out of the space between them here. You can already see what darkening that side up is doing. It's starting to give our skirt here more form. So I'm um, thinking about kind of bringing this shadow maybe up underneath right there. And maybe even connecting it to kind of that fold where the pleats are, sort of like so. Now I'm going at it very, very lightly in certain areas, and if we need to, we can always come in and, again, switch over to our colorless blender and kind of blend it back a little if we, if we need to. Again, be careful with the colorless blender to stay away from the greens. Uh, you will blur them and kind of mix them into the colors that we've got going. 
Now I just swapped over to my eraser, which again was the last brush that I had. I've been doing that all course, shouldn't be anything new. Uh, just kind of cleaning up that edge opposite. All right, fantastic. That's actually starting to look really nice. I'm really pretty happy with that. I'm going to go in a little bit larger here and just kind of hit this area right here a little bit. Knowing that kind of her arm is right there and the possibility of a shadow starting to develop underneath it. All right, great. So uh, just kind of look, standing back and looking at it, I want to kind of reinforce the shadow underneath here a little bit more. Again, if we need to blend, we can always come in and do that. And we can always switch back over to that other red we started with. If we uh, spot an area that maybe we need some more of that. Maybe we missed that red in a certain area. So um, again, just bounce around. Work with a smaller marker to kind of start pulling out some of these details. And uh, if you need to go with a darker color, maybe this one here, feel free to start to kind of bring that in in places. But again, we're not using black in any of the areas on this. Don't want to go that dark. First of all, we're working on a white background, so that white background is already making the values that we have pop. Um, it's typically not something I do, but uh, for this particular course, we are working on it because we're just coloring the character. Just kind of want to get you used to the process of, of using these Copic markers. All right, great. So um, that's starting to look really nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if we really wanted to kind of add to this particular texture, um, if you remember our reference image, there was some other line work. Now we've simply got these, these crossing big thick lines, but um, let's come in here with our marker, select maybe something like this color here, and actually switch over to, let's maybe try out the uh, super brush nib here. See what that looks like. We can also check out, let's maybe check out these right here as well. Maybe our Cop uh, Copic multi-liner. So what I'm going to do with this, uh, let's come in here and turn on our steady stroke. And now with a steady stroke, you can come in, you can get a really nice thick, or rather nice smooth line. Now I'm going to do that with a couple of these different ones. Uh, looks like maybe this one might be a little more better suited for that. Uh, I'm actually going to try it over here with this one. I'm thinking that the super brush nib is probably going to be the best option here, um, even though we're getting a little bit of transparency in that. So what I'd like to do is come in and kind of frame these stripes using the steady stroke option. Now, if you need to modify your steady stroke sensitivity, you can come over here to edit and steady stroke, and um, you can dial that up if you want more. And you can see here that little blue line is a little bit longer. It's a little blue dashed line. So uh, if you want less, come in here, just dial that down. I kind of had it about where I like to use that at. So uh, let's go ahead and rotate the canvas some. Come over here and see what this might look like. Yeah, that's going to work nice. So using the steady stroke to just kind of come in and frame these, uh, these stripes that we've worked on. I'm actually going to try and get a little bit closer. Sort of like so. And that one got a little bit too close. All right, great. So let's come over and do this one as well. And I'm not too concerned about value uh, varying with these little stripes. These stripes are so thin that it's uh, making them a lighter value just wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. They and Right now, they kind of match the green stripes that we've already got, the dark value of them. So I'm going to go ahead and stick with that. This is just a nice little subtle detail that might uh, be nice to finish off the skirt with. And we'll come in here and do one here. Again, kind of following the curvature of the stripes. Just like so. 
if I don't like the one that I drew, I, I'll undo it with a control Z. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Uh, this is going to be kind of our last step in painting or rather markering up this skirt. So uh, we'll come in here. Now I'll probably end up doing the exact same thing to these lines uh, right along in here and I probably will have to come in and modify my steady stroke and bump it down some just because of the variation uh, in direction for these lines. But you can see here, I'll just come in and do this one really quickly. How nice that it is ending up looking as far as just kind of adding to this texture. Now, now granted, we don't have all the fancy, the yellow lines, the white lines, and things like that, but it's hard to look at kind of the end result of this and not see that this is a plaid skirt. So, um, in this lesson, we have kind of done some finishing details for our skirt in adding some value as well as some nice little pinstripes to the, the overall pattern. So uh, this lesson is actually going to bring us to the end of this course. Hopefully you have enjoyed this course uh, devoted to Copic Marker Illustration here inside of Sketchbook Pro. As you can see, the Copic Markers and the Copic Library of Colors are an extremely versatile tool and set of colors that can produce some really amazing results. So have fun and thanks for joining me.